Hey there and welcome back to RimWorld. My name is Pete, we're back on the ice sheet and today we complete another episode of our RimWorld ice sheet survival series. You might still be able to hear it, I'm a bit under the weather at the moment and that is also the reason why this episode goes up a bit late. Now in the last one we successfully researched electricity and for that reason we now have a working wind turbine and attached to that we have a small heater that is now providing some much needed warmth in Cambia's bedroom. However, we have capped the temperature off at minus 25 degrees. This keeps the room safe from infestations while also allowing Cambiar to not develop hypothermia during his sleep. However, he will have to live with the negative minus 4 slept in the cold thought. Now to start things off today, we will haul back the rest of the Nutriamin that dropped back in the last episode. We will probably not be able to do much with it, but we could always sell it to make a bit of money. And with an outside temperature of minus 60 degrees, it's also good that we only have to make one trip. We then experience a psychic drone, I believe for the first time, at least the negative version. This will now have every male colonist wince in pain, and that of course also includes Cambiar. The psychic drone now provides him with a pretty hefty minus 15 mood debuff, which will very likely drop him into stress territory soon, so as far as we can control it, we want to make sure to not cause any more major problems for Cambia today. With the Nutriamin safely stored, we will now have Cambia return to a bit more research, however only as long as it takes for his hypothermia to wear off, because then we want him to head out again. Because our next item on our to-do list for today's episode is a bit of mining, although the outside temperature will probably not allow us to do that for all too long. As you might remember, a silver meteorite crashed on the map a while ago, and because that is essentially free money, we definitely want to get our hands on it. After only a few blocks mined, however, Cambia is already suffering from minor hypothermia, so let's not push him too hard here, we can always come back for the rest later. One good thing about silver, compared to let's say steel for example, is also its weight, allowing Cambia to carry a lot more of it. The weight per unit for silver is very low, and so Cambia is now comfortably hauling back 157 units back to the stockpile. That will bring our total up to roughly 400, and combined with the rest of the stuff we have lying around, that should be enough to buy us one or two nice items from any trader who passes by. To wrap up the day, Cambia will now quickly grab something to eat and then head off to bed. The next morning then starts with a beautiful aurora, which is very convenient because it perfectly counters the psychic drone. The Aurora now provides a plus 14 to Cambia's mood, which brings him out of the stress levels and out of the minor break risk, and back into a more neutral temper. Just a few hours later, however, the Aurora sadly comes to an end again. However, the Psychic Drone is still active, and that means we once again have a minor break risk. Luckily that one doesn't last for all too long though. Around 4 o'clock in the morning the psychic drone also ends and Cambiar's mood once again gets a slight increase. After a few more long hours of researching, Cambiar then once again goes off to bed and I notice that he has currently adapted a sleep schedule that is not really the most convenient for him as it has him sleeping during some of the warmest hours of the day while getting out of bed late in the evening or in the middle of the night. You can see it here, Cambiar is fresh out of bed and grabs his first meal at 9 in the evening, with the outside temperature already fast approaching minus 70 degrees, which of course makes it even harder for him to stay out in the cold and do things like mining for example. Now we are in the middle of winter and so the daytime temperatures are not that much warmer, but we probably want to adjust the sleep schedule soon to get a bit more out of his daily activities. Next event, a crashed escape pod with a completely naked survivor in it, and with an outside temperature of minus 74 degrees, this guy will probably not survive no matter what we do. Still, we can already start hauling him back, whether or not he arrives at the base a corpse or alive really doesn't make that much of a difference for Cambio. Mm. 
And here we are, the inevitable has happened, Shen has died on his way, and so his next destination changes from the sleeping spot to the stockpile. Once again, Cambiar then heads off to bed, this time however at a more agreeable time. The next day begins as usual with a round of research, however with the sun slowly rising we once again focus on some silver mining. Temperatures are still pretty uncomfortable but they should rise by a few degrees soon and so we might just be able to mine the rest of the silver meteorite. Alright, wonderful, that is everything mined and Cambiar can now haul 224 silver back to the base. His hypothermia is still well under control, the outside temperatures have gone up to about minus 56 degrees and I think that is close enough to his minimum comfortable temperature of I believe minus 47 degrees so that he doesn't progress to the next stage too quickly. With the silver safely stored and our reserves now up to 600, Cambia can quickly grab something to eat before he then once again makes his way into the mountain base bedroom. The next day then progresses without any further incidents and so Cambia spends most of his time researching until we once again receive a call for help. The situation here is already familiar, we have someone here who has been chased by pirates and best case scenario we can add both him and all the attackers to the food stockpile so we'll offer our safety and see what's coming. Alright, here is Meech, the latest temporary addition to the colony and I had hoped for him to be at least somewhat helpful in the upcoming fight however Meech is sadly completely incapable of violence so unfortunately he won't be of much use for us in that regard. And uh, here are the attackers now, the biggest group we've had so far. Four pirates in total, however all of them are luckily equipped with only melee weapons. So Cambiar and his auto pistol should have a bit of an advantage and so we might be able to get one or two pot shots in before they reach our defenses. Before the battle begins however we have some good news to talk about. Cambiar has just finished his current research project and that means we now have unlocked smithing. That in itself doesn't really help us though because without wood we don't really have anything to fuel a smithy, however it opens up the path to the next very important research project that we want to start immediately and that is machining. Machining itself does give us one or two nice advantages, the biggest one however is that it unlocks microelectronics basics. Enough about research though, let's get back to the situation at hand. Mead has made it back to the base, however the effects of hypothermia have already seriously damaged him as he has already started to develop frostbite. A few seconds later then Cambia takes up position because our attackers have arrived. And Cambia did indeed manage to get two shots in before the attacker reaches our defenses and that should hopefully be enough for this attacker to fall to one of our steel deadfall traps. Cambia can quickly heal himself and yes, that is the first attacker down, with the second one about to enter the trapped corridor. This guy unfortunately makes it out alive but now has the rock rubble field to deal with. This will slow him down and allow Cambia to take a few more shots. And that's it, the last shot kills him and with half of their numbers down the attackers decide to flee. However we cannot really let this opportunity for free food and clothing pass us by and so Cambia starts the pursuit. Fortunately he not only hits the first shots but one of our attackers also has a carcinoma in his leg and both of those together should severely slow him down. That in turn should allow Cambia to catch up easily and hopefully take out at least one more guy before he's able to leave the map. Ah, 
Alright, perfect. That is attacker number three taken care of. The fourth one, however, will probably escape though. So uh, we'll let him go and instead focus on hauling back everything of value. And for that reason, it's also actually quite good that Meat is still alive. He can help out a bit here, bringing everything back to the stockpile. Although the hypothermia will probably get the best of him sooner rather than later. And here he is, as expected meat goes down in the storage room no less. His extreme hypothermia has rendered him incapable of moving, and so he should be dead in a few hours. And yep, barely took two hours for meat to pass away. For Cambia, however, that is now one more body to add to the food stockpile. And I would say, four more bodies, a nice amount of equipment, all in all, a rather successful day out on the ice sheet. With most of the carnage cleaned up, Cambia can then head off to bed, rest a bit, and heal a few minor injuries he sustained. After getting back up, it's then time to rearm the remaining deadfall traps, before Cambia can strip all the bodies and haul their equipment back into the mountain storage room. And the room is filling up pretty quickly here, so we should hopefully meet a trader soon, because all of this stuff isn't really helping us at the moment. It just takes up space and is not really good enough for Cambia to wear it, so I'm simply waiting to turn it into cold hard cash. Now, however, everything is cleaned up, and that means Cambia can get back to some research, before then once again making his way over to the bedroom. Now, after a few hours of sleep, Cambia is awake again, but I have actually changed his schedule. Cambia will now always go to bed at around 10 in the evening, and I have also scheduled one hour of joy activities beforehand. You can see him do that right now, relaxing socially, and combined with the frequent research, which also gives him a small joy boost, this should hopefully be enough to keep Cambia's mood in the neutral zone and out of the stress levels. The next day then progresses once again without any major incidents, so Cambia's time is mostly spent researching. However, after the recent form and raiding party, I decided to once again slightly upgrade our defenses. For that purpose, I have queued up a bit of steel mining here. Now, we still have a few reserves, but we want to get our total up to about 275 in order to add one more long piece of steel wall to the corridor, which will then contain three more steel deadfall traps. However, as Kamiar is mining away, we have another event coming in. Here we can see a Manhunter pack of snow hares has entered the area. Four of them in total, all of them aggressive, and all of them set out to attack Kambiar. Now, they are all still quite a while away, so we don't have to panic yet. However, compared to humans, animals have one distinct advantage, and that is that they will most likely not trigger steel deadfall traps. So these four snow hares will in all likelihood make it into the base unharmed. And honestly, equipped with only a shoddy auto pistol, I don't really see a way to do anything about that. So uh, this fight might take a while. I have a sketch of a strategy in my head, but it's probably best to get Cambier something to eat while we still can. We will then once again have him take position out front and see if he can't land a few pot shots on the first animal. Alright, sadly not, and that means we can now hope for one of the snow has to trigger a trap, but to be honest, I wouldn't get my hopes up. Cambia in the meantime is doing what every sensible man would do in this situation, he is simply getting some sleep. And here we are. As expected, all four hairs have made it into the base unharmed, and this provides us now with a bit of a critical situation. Now they will scratch and claw on the steel doors here for a few seconds, but they will also stop doing that relatively soon as well, so we don't really have to fear them breaking anything down. However, and this is the main problem, at the moment Cambia doesn't really stand a chance in a 4 on one fight, even if it's just against snow hairs. And that means, while Cambia is safe in his bedroom for the moment, he is also more or less trapped. For the moment though, all of his needs are luckily in check, so I would say we'll just let him sleep for a while, and then we can see how we'll deal with the threat. 
Alright, Cambiar is more or less well rested and that means it's time for a fight. And the strategy for this one will look something like this. We will have Cambia wait for the snow has to put a bit of distance between them and the door here, and then he can open the door and start firing. His chances for a successful hit are rather slim to be honest, but then again our enemies are only snow hairs, so one successful hit might just be enough to take them down. Now as soon as the snow hairs see an opening they will of course all rush in, and that is the exact same time where we call the retreat. The snow hairs will then bang on the door for a few seconds, but quickly lose interest and go back about their business. Once they have buggered off we can have Cambia repair the door and then begin the whole process again. And yes, you're getting that absolutely right, this is about as tedious as it sounds. Now on attempt number 4 the inevitable happened, the first snow hair landed a hit, and that means Cambiar is now also injured which will further impact his accuracy. Luckily after a few more shots we have the first snow hair bleeding out here, although 14 hours is still a long long time. In his next attempt, Cambiar is then a bit more successful and kills one of the animals in one go, and so slowly but steadily we're working away against the odds here. The next shot lands us another hit and once again we have a snow hair in the process of bleeding out, and with the other two animals still quite a bit of a distance away here we will for the first time engage in melee combat. And we are successful, Cambiar takes another snow hair down, he doesn't sustain any new injuries in the process, and with that we only have two more snow hairs to deal with. Once again one of them approaches while the other one is a good distance away, and so Cambiar can try his luck in melee combat once more. This time however things don't go quite as smooth and so we quickly change up plans. We are quickly building a one tile stockpile inside of the bedroom here, and we will set that to critical priority and accept everything, and then we'll have Cambia retreat for a moment here and tend to his wounds. He suffered three fresh snow hair bites in this short sequence, so we definitely want him to bandage those up before we proceed. Then once Cambia is fully patched up we can grab the snow hair corpse directly in front of the door, which conveniently provides Cambia with a quick and much needed snack. I have forbidden him to use the door here so that he doesn't go up into our small shelter to use the table, which would of course once again put him into immense danger. And here we are now, with the snow hair corpse consumed Cambia's hunger is satisfied and we can have him return to the front lines. And once again our efforts prove to be successful here, on the last shot the snow had ice and we have finally evened the odds. One last shooting spree ensues and Cambio shows off his long range sniper skills here, hitting the target between the rock rubble over long distance and this now finally ends the snow hair rampage. For Cambiar it is now time to clean up, we will of course immediately remove the stockpile from the bedroom again, so that he can now haul all three remaining animal corpses to the corpse stockpile up north. He can also add the steel that he was mining before the attack and with that our reserves are now up to 300, and that is more than enough to finally begin work on our defense upgrade. First of all we're going to build another long wall here, very similar to the ones that we already have, with a door inside for Cambia to quickly come and go through. We can then add the three plant steel deadfall traps, but before Cambia starts working he can first get a full night of sleep. No sign of rest for our troubled colonist however, because despite his wounds quickly healing Cambia has now developed an infection and without any medicine on hand this could actually kill him. 
Now, there are two numbers here that we want to watch. The first is the percentage behind the infection, the other one the percentage behind immunity. If that infection percentage rises quicker than the immunity percentage, we might as well call it quits right here, because then, without any sort of miracle happening, Cambia will surely die. However, it seems to me right here that the immunity percentage is rising a tad bit quicker than the infection percentage, so while the infection will very likely progress to extreme stages, Cambia will probably develop an immunity before it's able to kill him. Now, we can't really do much other than just keep an eye on those two numbers. If the infection percentage should catch up too quickly, we will give Cambiar some bed rest, but for the moment it seems like he can continue working. The infection does give him a small penalty to manipulation though, which is why the construction process here doesn't go as smooth as I had planned. Still, in the end, the three traps are up. We don't quite have the materials for that last piece of wall here, but that is not that big of a concern at the moment. The infection in the meantime has progressed to a major one, and with nothing else of critical importance to take care of, I think it's best to give Cambia some rest here. And here we are, the infection is now extreme, and that downs Cambia, rendering him unable to move. Still, this is hopefully only a temporary thing. I think at this point it is safe to say that Cambia will develop an immunity before the infection can kill him. And yep, there it is. With the infection up to 90%, Cambia has developed an immunity, and this will now slowly cause the infection percentage to drop back down. The effects of that can be seen almost immediately. Cambiar is back up and able to move again, so after a few pretty eventful days here, we can finally have him return to research. And after researching for a few hours and also cleaning up the base a bit, it is now time for Cambiar to head off to bed once more, and also time for us to make the cut in today's episode. We nearly avoided death twice today, and I think that is more than enough stress for Cambia to deal with, so next time Randy Random will hopefully be a bit more generous and allow us to progress a bit more. Until then, as always, leave a thumbs up on the video if you liked the episode, or if you want to support the channel, then feel free to subscribe. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers!